I am now joined on India today for a Palestinian perspective by Mustafa Bargati. Uh, he is uh, the General Secretary of the Palestinian National Initiative known as the Al Mubadra. Uh, previously, he has been the Minister of Information in the Palestinian Unity Government, has been a member of the Palestinian Legislative Council since 2006, and a member of the Palestine Liberation Organization Central Council. Mustafa Bargati, welcome to India today. I want you Thank to start you so by explaining to our viewers watching all across India why you think the Hamas chose to attack across Israel at this time given the fact that they knew that the Israeli army's response would be massive and disproportionate. What do you think of the timing of this attack and the manner in which the Hamas has carried out this audacious assault on Israeli territory? To understand that, it is very important to understand the context. And the context is that Palestinians have been displaced in acts of ethnic cleansing since 75 years. And we have been under Israeli military occupation since 1967, 56 years of occupation. And no perspective for freedom for Palestinians from, the, from this settler colonial system. In the last year, the Israeli settlers conducted terror attacks on Palestinians in the West Bank, killing 248 Palestinians, including 40 children. Meanwhile, the Israeli army attacked all Muslim and Christian sites, including Al-Aqsa Mosque. And Netanyahu appeared in the United Nations two weeks ago, carrying a, flag, a map of Israel that includes annexing the occupied West Bank and Gaza Strip and Jerusalem, as well as the Syrian Golan Heights. He challenged the whole world that he's going to annex the area. And Israel have had the most extreme government in its history with fascist ministers like Smotrich and Ben-Gvir. Hamas understood that what we face today is no perspective for a solution, no perspective of ending occupation, and no perspective of stopping the Israeli massacres that are now continuing in Gaza Strip. But the fact is, Mustafa Bargati, that there is absolutely no justification for terror. That's the global view now. Uh, no matter uh, what the fact is, that the world's support and sympathy at this time largely with Israel, and there is all manner uh, of havoc being wrecked all across Gaza, including innocents being impacted because of this terror attack by the Hamas. No innocent person should be at, should be attacked. No innocent person should be hit, whether Palestinian or Israeli. But if you compare the figures, you can discover that the people who were subjected to terror all these years are the Palestinians. But the world does not pay attention to that. And Palestinians are not terrorists. Mustafa Bargati, what do you think is the Hamas's end game in this attack? Uh, are they wanting for the... Uh, conflict to expand. We've been seeing how Israel and Saudi Arabia are working towards a rapprochement, towards uh, diplomatic ties with each other. Is the Hamas essentially hoping to turn this into a far wider conflict? No, the conflict is here. And the Saudis and Israelis don't, are not in war with each other. The problem is between Israel and the Palestinian people, whom Israel is occupying since 1956 since 1967 and 56 years of occupation is a big problem. You do not accept that Britain will come back and recolonize uh, India. What we are suffering from is Israeli colonialism, Israeli settler colonialism, Israeli occupation. What Hamas wants, as we all want, Palestinians, is to end Israeli occupation so that we can live in peace with each other. The problem is that Israel wants to keep occupation, wants to continue the siege on Gaza, depriving people from electricity, from water, from jobs, from life. And at the same time, they want to have normal relations with all the Arab countries. That will not be working. The main problem is the fact that Israel is occupying Palestinian land. And the main problem is that this occupation has transformed into a system of apartheid that is much worse than uh, the, any apartheid system before in the world. I think the Indian people understand, like everybody else, that they want to be free. You fought to end the 
colonial British system and you got your independence. That's what we want as Palestinians, to end occupation, have freedom, have prosperity like everybody else. And it is not acceptable to treat Palestinians as if they are not equal human beings and to accuse Palestinians of being terrorists while we are under occupation and the system of apartheid by Israel. How do you see uh, this conflict go from here? We've already seen the Hezbollah fire some mortar shells which uh, saw Israelis responding with artillery fire. Do you see the Hezbollah getting actively involved in this conflict on the side of the Hamas? This can happen if Israel continues the massacres. A, a, a few minutes ago, Israeli airstrikes on Gaza killed tens of people in Jabalia refugee camp. Uh, the total number of Palestinians killed by Israeli airplanes is already almost 600 people, including more than 100 children and more than 70 women. Israel is conducting now massacres in Gaza. I do not want any Israeli to be killed, but I don't accept that Palestinians are killed either. And if Israel continues the massacres on Gaza, continues the attacks on Gaza, continues to kill civilians, including children in Gaza, claiming that uh, this is justified, then, of course, we could see an expansion of the conflict and Hamas, uh, and we could see Hezbollah joining the fight. We do not want this to happen, but it is Israel's decision. The best way now is to have ceasefire immediately, to stop all military actions, to initiate immediately an, a process of exchanging prisoners where Israelis who are in Gaza could come back to Israel and Palestinians, the 5,300 Palestinians who are in Israeli prisons would be released. But that's Mr. Bargadi, that's an absurd expectation. The, the Palestinians can't surely think that they can launch this kind of an attack on Israel, leading to hundreds of deaths. And then soon after, Israel will call uh, for a ceasefire. That seems to be a completely delusional expectation. No, you are misrepresenting the case. The Palestinians responded to Israel killing Palestinians in the West Bank. I told you, during the last four months, Israel killed 248 Palestinians in the West Bank, including 40 children. Hamas responded to the Israeli killing. They did not initiate killing. So Hamas responded to protect the people in the West Bank. Israel now is retaliating with airstrikes. The best way out of this is to stop now, immediately, all actions, have complete ceasefire, initiate exchange of prisoners, and the world must put their efforts to end Israeli occupation of Palestinian land. Because as long as there is occupation, oppression, a system of apartheid, a system of discrimination against Palestinians, this con conflict will continue. How do and you see the, the role of Iran in this? There's a lot of uh, commentary I'm reading about how uh, this seems to have been greenlit by the regime in Tehran and how they've been arming, training the Hamas. And if the Hamas had the kind of military hardware required for this kind of an attack, a lot of it actually came uh, from Iran. And Israel has military hardware from the United States. Isn't that true? Does Israel have the right to have military hardware and Palestinians cannot have anything to protect themselves with? Are you telling me we should be slaves of a system of occupation and apartheid and not be able to defend ourselves? I am so surprised that Mr. Biden, the president of the United States, comes out like, my, like your prime minister in India and says that Israel has the right to defend itself. Fine. They should also say that Palestinians have the right to defend themselves. Israel now tries to claim that this is about It's not about Iran or Saudi Arabia. It's about the fact that Israel continues to occupy Palestinians, continue to enslave Palestinian people, continue to subject us to a system of discrimination and apartheid. And the only way to end that is to stop the Israeli occupation. I think we have the right to defend of ourselves if Israel has the right to defend itself. Unfortunately, Israel, we tried diplomatic ways. We had post-law agreements. We had peaceful negotiations. Israel blocked all negotiations with Palestinians. They do not even meet with Mr. Abbas that they used to say he's a peace man. Now they are blocking even negotiations with Palestinians. They are blocking any diplomatic actions. And they continue to annex our land 
and implant illegal settlers on Palestinian land, grabbing it away from Palestinians and suppressing us in a system of enslavement. That is unacceptable. And the only way out of this is for both of us to be independent and have a normal, peaceful relations. Israel is killing the two states option. What, what should we do then? Accept to be slaves? This will never happen. Palestinians will never accept to be slaves. They demand their freedom and they will get their freedom. Although we are suffering most and although we are paying a very high price in our But state. what this could have done, Mr. Bargati, is open the corridor for the IDF to actually carry out a uh, ground assault on the Gaza Strip, which because of the, the, the severity of casualties before this earlier, Israel had never wanted to do or, you know, had thought about but resisted from. Now the Hamas's attack could have potentially opened uh, the doors for the annexation of the Gaza Strip. I'm sorry, but what you said is unfortunately incorrect. Let me explain. During the last years, from 2008 till now, Israel conducted five wars on Gaza, including ground invasion into Gaza. In 2014, they invaded Gaza with their tanks, killing no less than 4,200 Palestinians. They have been attacking Gaza continuously, and they have put Gaza under siege. People in Gaza, 2.2 million people living in only 360 square kilometers, 140 square miles, have no water, have no drinking water, do not have proper electricity, do not have jobs, in poverty, and Israel is not even allowing patients with cancer to get out of Gaza to get treatment. They put them under siege. Practically, Israel has taken the 2.2 million people in Gaza as hostages. And they subject them to terrible humanitarian situation. And from year to year, they attack them by bombarding them with planes and by attacking them with tanks. The fact that people in Gaza are trying to defend of their, themselves from the Israeli continuous aggression does not make them terrorists. It makes them freedom fighters. That is the reality. Well, we've been hearing multiple uh, Israeli points of view. We've heard Western perspectives. That is a Palestinian perspective from a member of the Palestine Liberation Organization Central Council, Mustafa Bargati, for joining us in India today. Thank you very much. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.